what's going on ladies and gentlemen welcome to the channel this is the rth podcast man i'm your host nephew and i'm checking in and all that pleasantries out the door bro because michael zephra out here talking all kind of cash ish bro so let's read it it says as much as tim zoo is in his little bubble he thinks he's the man he's only known in australia there are so many bigger names over there canelo alvarez why wouldn't you take that fight it's the biggest fight for all of the belts it's never been done before two kings fighting each other for a massive payday i knew it would always happen they got t-shirts made up tim zoo versus charlo it's time for people to start effing realizing he's just spinning ish and everyone believes it you don't even have it contracted to fight and you're making tim zoo versus charlo 2023 shirts like mate seriously then he got the face and the nerve to say that charlo's ducking him but he's fighting canelo alvarez you work that out for me because i'm still effing confused he's sitting there bagging me saying oh zephyr taking step aside fees what did charlo give him at least i got paid what did he effing get he got jack ish he got thrown to the curb and got his name pronounced wrong he's just in his own little effing bubble and everyone's believing his bull ish all right now from nephew over here over here right now right here on the rth podcast i send this message to you mr michael zephyr you gotta take the test <laughs> you gotta take the test you gotta get out of your little your little home drive on over to where tim zoo and his people be at have a sat down you and his people come up with some nice numbers contractually tell him to throw that wbo championship gold on the line and you guys got to duke it out center stage in Australia. And if you're from Australia and you feeling that, I'm going to need y'all to thumbs this up in the comment section below. Because Zephyr out here just running his mouth. And fam, it's enough to give that third fight for Tim Zoo this year in a tremendous fashion in a legacy style fight. Not only that, but I'm, I'm already ranking right now Tim Zhu as the number one fighter of the year. Although I know it might be derailed by guys like Naoya Inoue, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, Stephen Fulton, the popular guys, Tank Davis, who in my opinion right now is tied for number one with uh, Tim Zhu. Tank Davis has two fights, both by KO. Tim Zhu has two fights, both by KO. So they both are trying to hurry up and get that third fight. I think Zephyr, this would be big. For a Tim Zhu, as well as a Tim Zhu fight would be big for Zephra. Not only that, but it's a good rivalry. And I'm pretty sure if Tim can get it by KO, that would solidify his name this year in 2023 as being fighter of the year. Like again, I'm saying it could be the popularity test that takes the, the cake in real boxing. Okay? In the in the real strategic sport. They might give it to either Naoya No Way, Errol Spence. Terrence Crawford or Stephen Fulton because that's technically those two fights are technically the biggest fights of the year right but for a guy like me who take the 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 quality over the the quantity I take the quality over the quantity I, I'd rather see uh two fights that's why I'm, I'm kind of thrown off by the Canelo fight with Jamel Charlo I'm not I'm not hating like I'm not a person that hates so I, I respect it like I get that you know Charlo has the opportunity of a lifetime and so does canelo alvarez undisputed versus undisputed i get it but it's the opportunity of a lifetime and i explained it the way uh that way in my last video but i would rather see two fights i would rather see two fights i'd rather see two quality fights i'd rather see canelo versus benavidez and then i'd rather see charlo versus tim zoo i would rather see that okay i'm not lying to you guys when i say that but in, in that same essence i kind of get it i get it so i'm looking at tim zoo right now as fighter of the year because tank davis is on a layoff right now we all know why i don't talk about legal matters on this channel um so i'm just not going to talk about that but he, he can't fight right now tim zoo could get two more fights this year technically especially if zephyr you can get in the ring asap you can't be talking like that and i want to fight bro 
Don't pull a Lopez on me. Don't pull a T.O. on me, man. You got to want to fight, bro. If you want to fight, then you can say, oh, nah, is it just me, Australian fans, or is there for a little bit jealous, though? Because, see, this, this threw me for a loop, right? When I was reading it, I was like, oh, okay, I understand this. I understand that. Calling out the Canelo situation. Calling out the uh, Charlo situation. I get it. But then he said this, and I'm going to read it, and I'm going to explain it. He says, they got T-shirts made up. Tim Zoo versus Charlo. It's time for people to start effing realizing he's just spinning itch and everyone believes it. You don't even got a contracted fight and you're making Tim Zoo versus Charlo 23, uh, 2023 shirts. Like, mate, seriously? That sounds like jealousy to me, bro. Like, it seems like he's watching as everybody in Australia is jump, uh, jumping on the Tim Zoo bandwagon and he's sitting in the corner in disbelief. Like, cause I could understand to a certain degree having a rivalry with somebody, but then calling out the materialism and telling people to stop getting on the bandwagon, it's almost as if you're trying to keep people away from Tim Zoo. But what are you giving the people in Australia so that they can hop on your bandwagon? You got to take the test. You want to be the king of Australia. You see Tim Zoo trying to take the crown. You got to get in there and step in and take that fight. That's the same thing I was saying about uh, Anthony Joshua and Dillian White. Like, if you're a Zephyr fan right now, you probably don't even see what he's saying. Is anything wrong. you probably just be like, oh, okay, well, it is what it is. But if you're a Tim Zoo fan, you probably can look at Zephyr and say, that's kind of weird, bruh. That's kind of weird you feel like that. And I was saying the same thing about uh, Dillian White and Anthony Joshua. I was like, it's a, a certain level of jealousy there. You know, you got to watch as one guy goes from losing to you in the amateurs and, and you beat him, and then he gets into the professional league, and now he's the number one guy that's there. You know, he gets all kind of, of glitz and glamour, and he gets to live the good life in the professionals when that should have been your spot in Dillian White. And if you're a Dillian White fan, you look at AJ, you're like, oh, Dillian ain't jealous of AJ. Yeah, he just don't like him. But if you're an AJ fan, you can look at Dillian White and say, no, nah, you don't, you don't dis just dislike him, you're jealous. And I think in this particular situation, it's the same. Bro, Zephyr, you got to take the test, bro. You got to take the test. I would love to see it, bro. Tim Zoo on a crash course right now, bro. He knocked out Tony Harrison this year. He uh, knocked out Ocampo in a tremendous fashion. I don't even think Ocampo pinched him. I don't think Ocampo even got any leather on Tim Zoo before he went to sleep. And now, Zephyr, this is the perfect opportunity to not only derail the plans but get number one contender because charlo is in a win-win situation all right charlo isn't fighting for his undisputed reign he's not he's fighting for canelo's undisputed reign which means that if he go up to 168 and he lose he still win because he get to come back down to 154 as undisputed champion okay so canelo will be considered technically two-time undisputed but not really because he don't get a chance to take all the belts Right, he don't get a chance to do that. But in Charlo's scenario, he does. He does get the opportunity to take all of the belts if he were to win. Right? If he were to get the dub, he gets everything. Not in Canelo's aspect, unless they try to switch it up for that one particular night. But it is what it is, right? Because uh, I think uh, Chantel Cameron just did that with Katie Taylor. But since she was defending her belts, she couldn't take Katie's belts with her. So saying that to say, man, Zephyr, you get an opportunity to take the number one contendership and see Jamel Charlo when he get back down to 154. You get to take it. So why not take this fight with Tim Zoo? Especially if you feel this strongly. Y'all got freaking t-shirts made of Tim Zoo versus Charlo. Come on, Australia. Y'all got to sit the little kids table for that one, man. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, man. Get it on, get it on the dotted line first, man, before y'all start print, printing up t-shirts that's going on. Somebody is mad. Somebody is hot. That they, ain't, they, that they ain't gonna be able to make all that money for all them t-shirts they made. But, bro, this is kind of crazy, man. I really want my time before I go because I want nobody else thinking that nephew did this and I made Zephyr do it or I'm, I'm the puppet master behind him, bro. That's not what I do over here, but I am gonna give y'all the news. So here's what he had to say one more time before we go. As much as Tim Zoo is in his little bubble, he thinks he's the man, but he's only known in Australia. There are so many bigger people over there. Canelo Alvarez, why would you not take that fight? It's the biggest fight for all of the belts. It's never been done before two kings fighting each other 
over a massive payday. I knew it would always happen. They got t-shirts made up. Tim Zoo versus Charlo. It's time for people to start ever realizing he's just been an itch. And everyone believes it. You don't even have a contracted fight. And you're making Tim Zoo versus Charlo t-shirts. Uh, like, mate, seriously? Then he got the face and the nerve to say Charlo is ducking him. But he's fighting Canelo Alvarez. You work that out for me because I'm effing confused. He's sitting there bagging me. Oh, Zeph was taking step aside fee. What did Charlo give him? At least I got paid. What did he effing get? He got Jack Ish. He got thrown to the curb and got his name pronounced wrong. He's just in his own little effing bubble and everyone's believing his bull ish zephra you gotta take the test sign the contract big dog sign the contract so we can see y'all duke it out center stage in australia when it takes all oh, man and get this rivalry cooked and and serve to the people man sign seal deliver and as soon as bro y'all as soon as tim zoo come out with anything or they say that they're going to fight, or they in contractual agreements, I'm going to come right back, and I'm going to let y'all know, man. This is the RTH Podcast. I'm your host, Nephew. Take the test, Zephra. Take the test, man. Come on, man. You got to fight, bro. You got to fight. You got to put them up, son. Put them up. Put your chin up. Let me put you in the face. You got to get in there, duke it out, maybe get the win. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a long shot. I don't know. I'm not here to say who's going to win or who's going to lose. In this particular situation but bro when i read that i was like man i gotta let y'all know what's going on because i'm pretty sure ain't nobody telling y'all what's going on in this situation man again rth podcast your host nephew and i'm signing out man y'all take it easy bruh peace